One minute. Okay, it's 6.01 and the Conservation Commission meeting will come to order. The first order of business is the approval of the minutes from June, June meeting. I just had a few, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just had a few comments. Um, second page under number four at the very bottom, you just have JR. I think you want the, the whole, your whole name. I think you want your whole, your whole last name. You have your initials. Um, and then uh, point number three under D, um, where it says application for assistance with Mallee Farm. I think we just want to add application for technical. So that would be an add, then assistance, and then from UNH extension. You say 3D? I said, yeah, yep. And I don't know if this is necessarily not, but on the last page, um, letter four or Roman, <laughs> Roman numeral four, uh, if you want street after green. And that's all I had. I've got a few things. Uh, so under new business, the second paragraph, um, and Babinski, uh, the request has been made. Um, for that sentence, uh, uh, picking up, it's uh, debris left on commission-owned open spaces. I would suggest changing that from commission-owned open spaces to the Sunningdale Conservation Easement. Same paragraph, the Surf Pro sentence. S. Orzakowski notes that there is no designee in the city. I we'll change that to uh, from no designee to no designated budgetary entity. Next sentence: K. Dodds requests. Um, I'll we'll change that to inquires about. Um, the inquires about the frequency of the cleanup. Or maybe future frequency. When you're ready. Next paragraph, Jay Degler moves to allocate up to 2300. Um, change that from allocate, well, insert between allocating up uh, a one time disbursement of up to. with um, a caveat at the end of that sentence somewhere uh, that says that uh, says where future funding should be addressed by the council. And then under public comment, paragraph two, 
um, well, actually at the, at the end of that section for public comment. Uh, Scott Orzakowski notes the development plan intended uh, for there to be more vegetation at the pond. And under condition use permits A, uh, the third paragraph, drainage culvert appears to, to connect to a city managed culvert. Um, I would insert a city managed section of culvert over which the DPW has oversight. Just to make a distinction that the responsibility ends the road. And uh, in the following paragraph, the second sentence, the applicant will need to determine what work is required on each section or insert to restore drainage function. And I had 50 more, but I decided to Go easy on you. Any other comments? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, accept the minutes as amended. It was a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Is there any more discussion? Is there a second? Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion is approved. One abstention. Okay, the next item is public comment. Is there anyone here to wishes to speak? Oh, your microphone. Is it on now? Thanks, Sean. Um, so like I was saying, I don't know your protocol, so I'm looking for some guidance, but I wanted to do three things. I wanted to introduce myself, share with you my reason for being here, um, and also, if uh, allowed, provide a little piece of history on something that I read in this re uh, wetland restoration report that I received yesterday. Yeah. Okay, go. Okay, <laughs> thanks. So my name is Joni Furland, and I am an owner of, a fourth generation owner of 22 acres of property that abut the 25 Otis um, property that's in discussion, B and C. I own that with my husband, Bill, who's here with me tonight. Um, our reason for being here is to learn. Um, unfortunately, we've had some concerns about what's been going on there for quite some time, but this week, um, two days ago, was the first time we've heard anything from the city. We received a letter, and then I had a great conversation with Tara, who tried to bring me up to speed a little bit yesterday. But our goal is to, to learn what's going on and to share with you our feelings that we definitely have some concerns um, about what's going on. We're worried about not only our land and um, what would happen if it, that area is not protected and returned as close to as it was as possible but obviously the surrounding community which is important to us as well so um, as I said we're we're here to learn um, and hopefully um, you hear that we have some concerns um, and then the third thing I just wanted to share it says on page two of the plan 
Um, it says, the property supports a 0.9 acre pond, which according to the current owner was excavated by the previous owners, Norman and Lillian Fournier, who owned the property from 1944 to 58. And then it goes on later to say that the Fourniers also created a woods road across the wetland swale. I just want to clarify that um, in the time that my grandparents, who are Lillian and Norman Fournier, owned that land, it was never changed. The pond was an existing original pond, they used the area as a cow pasture, so they would have had no reason to expand the pond. And I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the next uh, item is conditional use permits and um, I'm A. Russell Amacor. It's Amacor, right? Amaconi, isn't it? It's still um, misspelled. Is it? Is seeking a conditional use permit to fill and grade property within the riparian and wetland buffer on a property located at 59 Milo Lane in the residential single family R1 district, assessor's map 69, lot 2D9, CUP 01, 2024. And uh, the applicant is not here to present tonight. Um, no, he has um, actually revised his proposal to remove the impact that he was proposing to do within the wetland buffer and has um, subject sent an email today as of 530 um, requesting to withdraw his conditional use permit where he is not going to be working doing fill within that 100 foot wetland buffer as indicated prior. And he'll work with Public Works regarding the other stuff that he discussed. Very much. Okay, B. Michael Davis is seeking a, a conditional use permit for the f after the fact excavation and alter alterations at the riparian and wetland buffer on a property located at 25 Otis Road in the residential single family R1 district, assessor's map 31, lot 49, CUP 03 2023. And Ms. Brown is here to present. Good evening, and again, my name is Marsha Brown with NH Brown Law, and I'm representing Michael Davis in this matter. And uh, I guess because there are two agenda items with Mike, uh, Michael Davis, I believe the last time we discussed them, we kind of blended the, the questions and answers with the two, and I'm prepared to talk about both uh, conditional use permits. If I may summarize the restoration plan, I just want to make sure that you have in your packet my cover letter as well as the wetland a, a document that's uh, entitled wetland restoration report it was one that we got timely to your packet but then we had to update a few references to the city so i'm not sure which version you have they have the first one they have the first one yeah okay all right and ms brown the um what went to the butters was it the Starting public on. notice for the planning board in okay. anticipation if the board makes a recommendation tonight they were notified of the public hearing for planning board which is what alerted it wasn't, wasn't any of these documents no only if they came in to speak with us okay. thank you thank you so i will start knowing that you've got the the first iteration the changes that were made subsequent to your packet I don't believe were substantive because they, and I'll just run through them. Um, there was one on page 11 where under section 7.4 um, any substitution of plants uh, would need um, to, uh, would need to um, have notice to a wetland scientist, DES, and the city asks that we include the city. <laughs> so sorry for that oversight, uh, but thank you, uh, staff, for noting that we should include uh, the city in that notice. Uh, not to um, interrupt your flow, but um, I had another place, maybe two more places, where I was interested in um, being notice, uh, notified as well as uh, NHDES. 
Yes, I it's was trying 14. to find. I, there were three. Yeah, okay. All right, great. Three corrections, and I only have one highlighted at the moment. All right, thank you. Um, but if I can, uh, I'll start a presentation, and then I'll take uh, questions afterwards mm -hmm. um, or during. So in the cover letter, I addressed what I understood to be the list, a January 4th, 2024 listing from the Conservation Commission that started number one, boulders at the north end of the pond, two, fill and replacement at the outlet of the stream. So it had other elements of that list. But taking that as the charge from this commission on what needed to be addressed in the restoration plan, I summarized in the cover letter those points. And so just to summarize those here before you. With respect to the first issue uh, the Commission was concerned about, boulders at the north end of the pond, there were three components to that. A, recommended removal of the, of the boulders and restoration of the natural grade to restore natural drainage in and out of the pond and support amphibious passage. So we addressed that in the cover letter. The boulders don't affect the, the drainage in and out. Um, they may affect um, amphibious passage However, but for the fact of adult fish um, being predatory on the amphibians, our wetland scientists did not believe that the boulders were going to present a problem for passage because they're not using something that, you know, a pond that's where there are fish that are going to eat it. They're going to use a different, a different wetland. Um, so that the other issue with the boulders is the soil there is very um, susceptible to erosion. And where the boulders now are holding back that erosion, if we remove them, it's going to destabilize the soil. It could cause sedimentation in not only that pond, but also down uh, stream in the, in the wetland. So that was the recommendation from our wetland scientist because of the concerns um, were met. There is, I think, a 12 or less percent ch um, of, uh, of the pond shoreline having the boulders, the rest of the pond is open for amphibious passage. So that should be um, plenty for them. Uh, with respect to the, the second item under boulders, leave the western side and other areas unchanged. Check. The uh, restoration plan does that. Um, C, no further addition of boulders. That's not going to happen, or, or that is going to be complied with. There are no there are no plans in the restoration plan to add any other boulders. With respect to the second issue, fill and replacement of the outlet stream. Pause for a second, please. Pardon me. Can we pause for a second? Sure, I, I will take one. questions whenever. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the other things that we and you know this this uh, you know the history. I mean, there's been several meetings on this. Uh, or discussions about this. And one of the things that came up about that pond as well was there was a lot of da downed wood in there. So there were trees that had fallen in on one side and uh, the applicant wanted to remove all of that of those. And we had suggested that that would stay. I did, I've been out to the site, and I don't recall an area where there were downed trees into the pond, and nor did I pick up on that in any of the pictures mm. that we took recently sure. of the area for the pond. So I'm not familiar with... Uh, that could have been removed, I guess. The, that would the be down, one option. But there is a companion conditional use permit for cutting trees, mm -hmm. yeah. but those are market-ready ones that I can't even put my arm around, yep. um, which are growing. They're not down, so I... Yeah can't speak to that so okay well okay I, I can't remember if we had that laid out in the letter that went to them or not but that was our our recommendation on site was to stop disturbing the pond and that included to not remove any more material for especially the applicant was interested in fish habitat and habitat for wildlife which of course down wood is good for um, but if it's not there anymore I don't I yeah, I guess that's that's something that maybe we address later. Well, I will. I can respond to does the restoration plan is the goal to return this to natural? Yes. Is it prohibiting future disturbance? Yes. So I think with those conditions, it's going to get to the end that you're trying to that you were you just expressed. 
Okay, yeah. I mean, that would be our hope, I guess, yes. That, so any new inputs of wood would be left alone. Fallen trees. Fine, I don't believe... Not harvested trees, but naturally fallen. Not so to you know, remove the pines from the discussion that, that he wants to fell, but um, anything around that pond that was to fall in would be left alone. I don't specifically remember the restoration plan discussing that issue. And I guess there are two ways to handle that. I, I think the easiest would be to make note of that in the, the approval, that if that is a wish of this body, that you okay. vote on it. And because that was not something that came through in the list. I made sure that when I got what I thought were the list of concerns, and it sounds like it may not have been all inclusive, that um, we responded, that the restoration plan respond to those. And it wasn't in that list. so. That's right. why I didn't know to respond to keeping existing fallen trees. Yeah. No, that's fair. I mean, I, you know, I think some of this is, our dis base, is based on discussions that we had with the applicant, either on site or afterwards. And, and I don't remember if we included the downed wood within that. But I, I, I'm, I'm happy with, you know, your way of addressing it, that we can go forward with that. So I'll move on to the second uh, uh, point of or second issue in the list, uh, fill and replacement of the outlet at the north end of the pond. Uh, a, rest restoration of the stream as much as possible by removing the fill and restoring the natural grade. So if you look at the plan, the last page has a section of if you look at the plan, you can see where a drainage pipe used to, or is now, but it's the, the swale is going to be restored at that point. So going from the pond to the boundary of the property, that swale is going to be reestablished. So that is the outlet of the stream, or I, I guess, well, it's, I don't know that it has standing water, and I don't think it, you know, meets the definition of a, you know, it may be a perennial stream, but I don't know that has the groundwater for it. But anyway, I'm, I've been calling it a swale, a, dra a uh, drainage swale. Um, so that is going to be reestablished. So as far as restoring the stream, that is provided for in the plan. There is um, on 2B, outlet pipe needs to be reviewed and approved by a certified engineer to determine the proper elevation and flow. We have had a survey are taking a look at the elevations. So that issue of flow with the drainage swale, making sure that the flow does occur at the, pr at the proper uh, drainage uh, pitch, that's covered in the, in the restoration plan. Item three was fill in the northern portion of the, or fill in the northern portion of the property. This area should be all vegetated to reduce more runoff. There is a vegetation plan in the restoration re um, report. The vegetation is segregated into the 50-foot buffer and then the 50 to 100-foot buffer. And that table is on page 12. If you have the prior version and not the updated version, table two says to be determined on it. However, we uh, have provided staff with a up-to-date, an updated table. Dan, can you read those, please? Yep, I can. So with the tree, this, I'm looking at table two. Mm -hmm. Trees, red maple, size, seven to eight inch height or one inch caliper minimum. Quantity, 28. This is table two pertains to the upland, upland buffer. Shrubs, hawthorn and shad bush, four to five feet of height and three to four feet of height respectively. 42 planted randomly of the hawthorn, 42 planted randomly of the shad bush. I'm sorry, on, on this one that uh, Daniel just handed me, uh, or under Hawthorne, it's got Hawthorne and or gray dogwood and or hazelnut. Has, has okay. that changed? Thank you. Yes, if you've got that, yes, that's, 
that's the entirety of that section. So I'm sorry, which one's final? The one that the, the list that you just read is the final one or what you just presented? No. What um, what was just read is is what is the final. Okay. All if right. you have in your packet something a table that says to be determined, that's the old one. Well, I understand that, but I thought that you just said Hawthorne. And, and I, I was corrected correctly <laughs> because I just said Hawthorne, but he's right. Hawthorne or Gray Dogwood or okay. Hazelnut to be complete. My apologies. And then second under Shadbush was and or a sweet pepper bush. And then last, um, herbaceous, uh, conservation seed mix. Uh, actually, that has not really changed. And the total number of pounds will determine, I mean, that needs to be de decided later. While we're on this table, I will note that this is a lot of trees. We don't, the variable is the cost. We don't know how much these are going to cost because, as you know, if it's done in the spring, you know, um, uh, trees and shrubs are more expensive in the fall. It's so I raise that because if it if cost becomes an issue, uh, Mr. Davis may need to phase in the plantings. If so, we will be in touch with city staff with that request. But I just want to let you out let you know now that that is a variable right now. The plan is to get these economically and do the plantings all in one fell swoop. But if the, it can't be done in one um, one project and needs to be phased, uh, we will um, certainly be back to inform the Conservation Commission. Do you have any, um, any idea of the periodicity of the phase? Don't. I don't. Not until uh, we get it's dependent on the season, and uh, we still don't have DES's approval yet, although that permit, as soon as we have uh, the city's okay on the restoration plan, <coughs> we'll be filing the DES permit, and we'll be, whenever we get that approval, then it opens up, okay, when can we get the, if they, when can we get the restoration started? Okay, and oh. will there be, a, <coughs> excuse me, um, an end line reestablished at that point, or for when all the trees will have been planted? I would as assume assume so. Um, I don't know if the conditional use permit's good for a year. Uh, you know, that's kind of seems to me to be on the on the long end. I, I think but it's open ended, um, which is why I would like to get it addressed. You know, why we why we can. I can tell you that the intent is to get the job, get this restoration plan implemented sooner rather than later. Knowing that a delay right now is because we don't have the DES permit in hand, mm -hmm. that should be taken care of in the coming months. And then the only other possible delay is what if the cost comes back ex astronomically not feasible okay. in, the, in the fall. Um, so I just trying to, you know, be transparent about that. Sure. Thank you. So moving on um, to item four, tree removal from the buffer. Provide a landscape plan showing the plantings and areas to be revegetated. Uh, you've got that um, table one and table two apply to the 50-foot wetland area, and table two applies to the upland buffer. And if you look at the last page of, this, of the restoration plan, you'll see the, the survey that denotes where that 50 foot and 100 foot is. With all of the trees and shrubs, uh, the, the 42 and 28, uh, we have not <laughs> specified where, you know, put, put dots on the, on the plan, so to speak, that it's just going to be random. Now, uh, 4B, it should be noted that on the plan that pesticide use should be avoided. That is part of the restoration plan. Pesticide use is, is um, not is going to be avoided. So we've addressed that. Uh, with, with respect to 4C of the uh, issues, all mowing and fertilizing and planting in the 100-foot buffer needs to cease. That has ceased. And um, with the vegetation uh, allowed to regrow, there's going to be a post-planting report and then two years of monitoring to make sure that the plantings took. So that is in the, in the uh, restoration plan. 4D, 
there shall be no new grading or tree cutting allowed. And that is also in the, the restoration plan. So we, the plan complies with that as well. That is with the exception of Mr. Davis's conditional use uh, permit for the pine trees that he would like to, to remove. Um, and I have already previously said, said that they're, they're market ready and there's an understory. Um, so it doesn't seem to be there's going to be any vegetation that's going to be um, removed other than the trees. There will be vegetation there to keep things stable. On uh, the list, the last one was five other observation deck um, to be removed that has already been removed. So in looking at the list and looking at the restoration plan, I believe it meets everything. We've run this plan by the staff. I didn't hear any substantive concerns other than um, the request to uh, add them for notifications, which we, we've done um, in the uh, updated uh, restoration plan. And so with that, if you have any other questions, I will take those. Thank you. Um, I'm relieved that you've presented this. Um, it's uh, it's a, a vast improvement over what we have been uh, working with. Um, I, I have uh, a few questions and, and comments. Um, so under vegetation 3.2, what page, please? Sorry. Uh, page five. Sure, I'm there. Thank you. Uh, in the invasive plant paragraph, it talks about uh, glossy buckthorn, which. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not with you on the invasive plant. Oh, oh, oh. Well, second final paragraph. paragraph. Yeah. Second paragraph down. Okay. Um, so I was wondering whether anyone had looked into the aquatic plants. We uh, we noted. That. And uh, Mr. Davis noted as well that there were um, what appeared to have been new aquatic plants uh, crowding the, um, especially near the the, um, the boulders area of the pond. Okay. Um, just wondering whether the you know the disturbance maybe in the temperature difference had uh, lent itself to the establishment of, of some base of aquatic plants. I'm I'm just looking on where in the report we we talked about in possible invasives in the water. And I don't believe um, invasives in the water I'm not seeing that right off that they are discussed in here. It might it might be that you know they're in their life cycle they they weren't visible when the wetland scientist went out. You mm -hmm. know, one reason I'm asking about it. So is it that um, in granting approval of this, would you condition uh, monitoring to also cover alerting whether there are invasives in the water? Yeah, I would go past monitoring and say. They need to be removed. Yeah, but does the um, uh, ordinance already require removal, or I'm trying to think if there's no. an existing obligation? But no, okay. in fact, I think um, DES needs um, to sign off on removal um, if there is okay. any herbicide to be applied. So I'm wondering if this is something that um, will be addressed in the DES permit application. You know, if they're maybe you know something. So, it sounds like the conservation commission would like the perhaps maybe the, the solution is to have the DES permit application address or, or make a recommendation on how to respond to invasives if they are found in the in the pond. Yeah, whether the DES addresses it or not, I'd, I'd like to see it addressed. Um, okay. You know, especially since there's um, uh, outflow into Tate's Brook. Um, I'd like to make sure that stuff doesn't spread. When we were out there, uh, it looked like there were in intermittent streams potentially at the boundary and, uh, and past it. Which section of the property? Uh, well, 
the stream outlet at the north end and um, following the, the northern boundary from there uh, all the way to the edge and then turning south past the, you know, past the leveled area. It looked to me like that was probable. I'm just, um, you know, I, I looked at the um, comment about uh, you no know, vernal pools identified, which is, you know, thank you for that. But I'm just wondering about the intermittent stream. With the wetland scientists having been out there, didn't identify anything other than the wet that we have here for, mm -hmm. for restoration. So if there was an intermittent area other than what I'm calling the drainage swale. Yeah. I'm not aware of it. I relied on the consultant who's the expert in this area to identify if it was there. Sure. And it ha and he didn't include it in here. Yeah, it's it's one of those It's not a gray area really, but when when we get applications um, often the you know the wetland scientists will focus on the property specifically. But there happens to be wetlands, you know, immediately abutting the, the property, or there, there might be a stream abutting it, which comes to bear on the on the buffer. Um, so that's right. my concern. Right, and I will note that in the survey that you have, which is the older, the first version, mm -hmm. that survey has been updated to show the repair the repair, the fifty and the hundred foot buffers that are associated with the drainage swale. They're not yeah. depicted on your version right now. They are yeah, on the updated that. one. Yeah, I understand that. My point is that there would be, if there was an intermittent stream um, at the, you know, at the edge of the, of the boundary or just beyond it, then the implications may be that the buffer extends southward from the, from the northern boundary as well. Off the off the property, right, right. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, now that I'm oriented to what you're talking about, um, that the stream is going to be dump stream. The the drainage swale is going to be dumping into an yep. area that yes is on an abutting property, and that was going back to the concern about uh, sedimentation mm -hmm. with keeping the boulders because we didn't want the sediment to travel down sure. off the property to the neighbor's property yep. again because this ultimately does go into the another tributary to the Salmon Falls. Um, so I know that the wetland scientist is, is um, aware of the continuation of that wetland, whether it's an intermittent stream, drainage swale. I think we're talking about the same wet area. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Tegler can probably speak to it a little bit. We, when we were there, um, I, I asked you whether you saw any evidence of, of wetland beyond the, yep. the outflow. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, turning right, uh, it, it looked to me like from from the topology, like there might have been an intermittent stream going in that kind of direction. heading towards that larger wetland and yeah. the uh, yeah yeah and the, and the um, you know the contours kind of back that up. But um, yeah, there's definitely drainage going down that way for sure. Mm -hmm. So I guess I've lost the concern. I, I now agree with you <laughs> that if yeah. there's a wet area that this swale goes into. I just want to revisit because I want to make sure that I've captured what the concern was. That if there's an intermittent stream, that there's a buffer that um, would be attached to that stream. Um, so you'd have the buffer for the um, for what you're, you're calling the, the swale, um, and then there would be another buffer that would overlap that, coming south from the northern end of the boundary. So the um, the the balance would be that there there may be some extra buffer uh, laying over that leveled area south. May I show you a picture? Sure. Yeah. And I think if I display it this way, but I've got an updated 
updated plan that shows on Mr. Davis's property the wetland buffer for that swale. Right. I mean, it's not going to go off, but at least that's what he's working with. Right. Yeah. So what the I'm protections. Is there, there may be another buffer. You know, if the stream is here, coming this way, then there would be another buffer coming down this way. Um, gotcha. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's an immediate issue for uh, for the restoration, um, but it ought to be noted for the future that there, you know, there may be a buffer there. A buffer coming from an abutter's property that would affect his use on his right, property. Right. Yeah. Sorry that we had to belabor through this, but I wanted to That's make sure right. that I yeah, clearly understand yeah. sort of what you were talking about. Yeah. Well, the one way that it, w it would come to bear on the, on the restoration plan is that, and you noted in the plan, that there is a handful of very large boulders at the north end of the, uh, of the boundary. Um, and at those boulders, the, um, uh, it, it, the land drops about eight feet, I would say straight down which is pretty severe um, and, and it would change you know in in this map here you, you know you can see the contours were gradual at one point um, I don't know what effect what impact that would have on the wetlands north of the property but it would have some um, I don't I don't know I don't think Removing the boulders is the best idea. Um, I would I would ask the commission whether they have any ideas on that. Um, whether can tell the, the best thing that we could do is leave them, or I can tell you that the report, as far as sedimentation from the project affecting that abutter wetland. It's going to be protected because the, the plan does call for hay bales or other, you know, sediment retention mm -hmm. um, mechanisms. So those are in in the plan. Understood. Yeah, I wasn't concerned sorry, about that, erosion that, that aspect. or sedimentation. I was I was thinking of the um, the sheet flow of, of the of the water from the property off the property that basically was at one point um, a, a gradual sheet flow. Uh, into the wetland, and now it's pretty, dram pretty dramatic at that eight foot drop off. You know, maybe, maybe that's just something that we have to live with, but. Again, I took, you know, and, you know, I realize this is an ever uh, evolving issue. You know, when you see something new, it, it prompts another question. I went by the January list. <laughs> I, I don't mean to lock you into that, but well, that's, I, that's I, I wanted I had, to make sure that I, I at least responded to that. You know, if the wetland scientists uh, were, were going to come back to the commission prior to you, you rejoining us, because we had so many disjointed conversations with the applicant, um, mm -hmm. and um, and that that list that you got was not comprehensive. Gotcha. Um, so you probably will hear a lot of stuff tonight that isn't addressed on here. And that's why we have the hearing today. Right, right. And you have the option, if you vote, to uh, attach more conditions. But I at least have a report that it meets your initial list. Yeah. Do we have evidence of erosion at that eight-foot drop-off today? OK. Is anything in this plan likely to increase the outflow at that site dramatically? No. Then my supposition would be that we probably don't have an imminent erosion issue at that site, and we're not likely to exacerbate it by what they're proposing here. Yeah, I wasn't worried about erosion. Uh, I was I was concerned about the you know the flow of the of the water from from the property into the wetland, and you know the impact on uh, the plant life. Uh, changing hydrology. Yeah. Is there like a substantial change from what's being proposed today? Uh, it's the plan doesn't really address the, the boulders at that 
location? Well, the, the, the site has been stable. I'm sorry to interject, but the site has been, you're right. I mean, the site has, site has been stable enough that with the altered elevation of the outflow, it's caused vegetate, wetland vegetation to form on the southern part of the, art, you know, the newly created. When I walked the boundary in that area that you're talking about, there was a silt fence. I didn't see any, anything new. Um, right, like so that new outlet. So we've got that new wetland to the south, and the plan proposes to let that go, basically, and, and then restore the wetland to, to, to the north, the original wetland. If we're doing that, and then we have that eight-foot drop-off uh, just before the wetland, maybe that original wetland will struggle a little bit more to become what it was. Jammer, do you have any thoughts on that? I, I think it's a possibility. I, I think it would be unlikely with the, with the level of disturbance here. Um, I definitely see where you're coming from, but I think I'd be surprised if it would be substantial enough to really impact that wetland, I think. And it's not just the eight foot drop. There, there was that large hill of debris or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that has been flattened, basically. So there's you know, the water that was going from that area of the property is probably not going in that direction anymore. Since there's no, there's no slope. Yeah. Where would that water be going? I, I would guess it's going to the east, but I don't know. Uh, so I, I I think that's an important concern, but I I also I feel like addressing that <laughs> might cause so much more disturbance right, yeah. that it just wouldn't be worth it. Um, because that is a you know there was significant regrading and you know movement of earth that created that, but it, it, to to address that, I just think I don't think that's a great idea. I think we live with sort of right. where we can move this towards as the best option, and uh, it'll have what two years of monitoring on the site, so maybe we can gain some insight from that. That's not a huge amount of time, but uh, and that's maybe the the way to go. Yeah, I, I, I kind of lean in that direction. I just wanted to run past everyone. Yeah, because it does. I mean, I'm. I think you know part of the part of the story, right? And 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 the list that Scott just mentioned and the limits on that was that we didn't have the expertise. You know, you I can stand out on that site and see how disturbed it's been, how much dirt has been moved around, especially on that backside when you look at that drop. But when the applicant was here before, we couldn't give him numbers. Like, I couldn't say, oh, that should be a 7% grade or anything like that. And that's where I think, at least for me, that I was hoping that, you know, the engineer or the, um, the ecologist that you all are working on would address that. And maybe, I mean, it seems like maybe they did, that they walked the site and were like, okay, this is, this is acceptable how it is. Um, so it's, 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 that's where this concern comes from, I guess is what I'm, I'm trying to get to you. But I do think, and, and I, I mean, we had this discussion out there that, that it would just be such a big disturbance to reset things. And I, and I still lean, I still sort of am, am at that place versus restoration, true restoration. Um, under uh, on page 10, under soil importation 7.1, the final sentence talks about well, it's, it's just a uh, curious um, wording for me. Um, 
This is one of the items we brought up too. You did? Okay. Um, and Marsha will probably be able to address um, how Mark revised that okay. if you want to touch upon that. Um, but we did flag that as well for them. Okay. Yes, because Mark Jacobs had an example as to why this came in because, or he had originally phrased it the way it was because there was a soil importation that was undone unbeknownst to him on a project somewhere else on the seacoast and it came in with invasives and he was not informed of it before and now they it was laid and now they have an invasive problem so that was to cover if a contractor goes out around him um, however um, because of it, it, it it's um, it could the Rephrasing could be corrected. Um, let me just read what, he, on the new, re, new version um, that was sent to you a few days ago. It says, if restoration activities identify the need to import any soils to supplement existing sources and properly restore wetlands at any point during restoration construction, at a minimum, a certified wetland scientist will inspect the source of any soils before transporting to and depo deposition on the site. Parentheses, note, since most soil stockpiles are sourced from multiple locations and subsequently commingled, and since chain of custody is usually unknown, inspection prior to transport may not guarantee the source is free of invasive vegetation species. Okay, so you, you struck that. Uh contacting this office portion. Yep. Okay. okay um, under, on the same page, se section 7.2, invasive species. Second paragraph, um, it says that uh, NHDS will be consulted um, my concern is uh, after they're consulted, will that be, will the recommendations be carried out? I think it's implied in there, yes. Can it be explicit? Yes, it, it will be, it can be made explicit. Thank you. Is this something that you want to handle with a revised report, or do you want to handle as a condition in approval? What's, I'm sorry to ask the mechanism, but I just want to. It could be a, if the board, certain revisions that the board is looking for to be put into the report um, could be there. So the commission makes their recommendation to the planning board. So it could be almost treated like a plan revision we'll call it like a report revision maybe, rather than a plan revision. So it's not something that we're saying, get this done before the planning board, but it'll be reported to the planning board that certain items that they would like addressed as the overall approval, and if that makes sense. The planning board will weigh that if they agree with those recommendations the commission has made, which typically they do hold um, true to a lot of the recommendations provided by the Conservation Commission, um, but they would incorporate it into the overall approval, if that works and makes sense to everyone. Yeah, to the me, planning board would decide whether and how it, or if it gets into the, uh, the final plan, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, we have track change <laughs> in, in Microsoft Word, so it would be easy to reflect any of the, these recommended changes in the plan, in track change, prior to the planning board meeting so that you can see where the rubber meets the road, how those changes are in the actual plan, yeah. if you wish. Okay. So I just need to get that verbiage, you know, what sections. I made note, yep. um, but I guess I would then suggest I would run that track change by staff. So if the board makes their recommendation tonight, we're doing planning board packets 
tomorrow-ish. So I just don't know if it's going to be a feasible thing to request of you to make those track changes to include it in the planning board packets. Just so that way um, we want to have them have the report that you discuss, if that makes sense. We can include, we'll include changes in our um, staff memo too to them. Mr. Rose is on the planning board. Yeah. And he can, he does a great job summarizing a lot of the conversation so that happens here. If we place that as a recommendation when we get to planning board, assuming it happens next week, we can make sure it's conditioned there as well. So Fine. that way you're not revising it two in the morning tonight. Fine. I can work with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just for the Scrivener act, act, uh, aspect, I wanted to make sure I had that understood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, under uh, on page 11, um, section 7.4, plant specifications. Second paragraph, the bolded sentence at the end, all woody shrub and tree species will be non-ornamental -orn varieties. That's good. I was just curious whether there will also be native. They're intended to be native on the table one and two. I, I suppose that makes that moot, yeah, okay. I think everything they're proposing is a, a native in, on yeah. our lists. Yeah. Because they went, um, uh, Mar uh, Mark Jacobs went through the, the list of native species and pulled out those for table one and table two. Okay. All right, page 12, table one, the herbaceous row. I'm wondering about reeds. Do you have any? I'm sorry, you, you asked about reeds or yeah, weeds? Yeah, whether, sorry. Where are we? Table one on mm -hmm. page 12. Um, yeah, for the herbaceous, I didn't have any issues with that, with the red top and switchgrass. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be the year long hydrology there to support reeds. Um, Where were you thinking? Uh, around the outflow. There, there were, there were cattails removed. I'm not sure whether there were reeds removed. Kevin, do you remember anything about that? No. I think if if it would support species, I think they'd pioneer pretty easily and, okay. and repopulate right. pretty quickly. I believe. And if there was some previously, it should still be in the seed bank as well. Would um, and I think they'd catch that during the monitoring. So if we kept up with that, reeds also quickly populate. Um, could, you know, especially like Phragmites, yeah. for sure. But again, if that's nothing there, this place, I guess. Yeah, I think we might. Okay. I mean, that section of the pond, I mean, that's going to change a lot with the removal of the trees, too. I mean, that's a, like another variable, but I don't know that we can address that in this report, in this part of this discussion. Thanks for your patience. No. So for the reporting up to two years, um, my concern is uh, how do we turn the, the findings into actions? And, and I, you know, I know that's implied, but um, we don't have a great track record with this site, so. Um, once they're gone, once the wetland scientist is gone, how do we know that you know the recommendations will be followed through on? I, I guess I'm, I need clarification on which, which recommendation, because if things are not done, you have enforcement authority for this plan. So I'm seeing the Conservation Commission being able to enforce compliance. Um, I 
Are you thinking that if a tree die, uh, if, if fifty percent of the trees die in the first year, and they're picked up in the report, whether they're going to be replanted? I mean that that right. to so, me so is that the the. Um, You know, the, the thrust of, of the, the um, I can't remember the term, but um, that the nature of the plan is, is followed. Um, so, we, yes, we do, we can follow up on things and, and enforce anything. We can report it. The city can take action on it. Um, but if there are recommendations made by a wetland scientist uh, or botanist or, or anybody, um, it doesn't really fall in, fall into the purview of a strict, um, you know, it's site specific. So there's no there's no ordinance that says you need five trees planted here. You know what I mean? Well, yes, in that this is a restoration plan, is a binding contract between the city and the and the property owner, mm -hmm. and the it has planted randomly, you know, 42 or, or eight, you know, shrubs or trees, depending on which section. So you do have that level of specificity with res this report for enforcement, is how I'm seeing it. So if the CEP approval at planning board included, if it would even need to be explicitly included, compliance with any monitoring findings, that would make it an enforceable document. You also have a superior court action for enforcement of this. So to the extent this is adopted as a, as a judgment, um, you also have that level of enforcement. Um, and we don't know whether for, for that two years, uh, two year period, whether the report will be coming from a professional well and scientist. My hope and expectation is that Mark Jacobs, who is intimately involved with this, will be involved with the planting on site um, with city staff, monitoring what trees are going where, and will be on hand for year one and year two of the, the monitoring. I, I, yeah, I just want to make sure that we don't get any more back of the napkin drawings um, for what might, you know, might be done with a bucket loader. Pardon I understood. <laughs> I, 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 I certainly understand that concern. I'm glad to at least get this product that will help Mr. Davis get over the finish line and get this all, you know, behind behind us. Okay. All right. Well, I've uh, exhausted everyone. <laughs> Can I add just one note? Mm -hmm. On the 7.5, there's two sections about um, reporting to DES for that long-term monitoring. Can we plug in the city on those ones? Did we not include? I don't, unless I'm looking at the old one, which is possible. No, I'm looking at the newer one. Um, I think those ones just got missed in 7.5. So it's to provide the report um, within 30 days of completion and then um, uh, necessary to confirm successful reestablishment in the restored wetlands, the status reports to DES, if we can just also be CC'd on those. Yep, I see. Um, on page uh, 13, it just references DES. Yeah. Right, so we, we missed on page 13, third paragraph from the bottom, yeah. the city there. Got yeah, it. otherwise I think you got all the other ones that we had talked about previously. Yep. Okay, all right. I do have um, one more comment, and maybe this will uh, be something you know, from the public comment um, that I believe was intended for uh, the planning board, but I'm glad to know what the concern is uh, now about um, uh, the abutter and what's what's going on. Um, I will, you know, stay behind uh, with this meeting and, and catch them and see if they have any other uh, questions. I'll, you know, make sure that I can uh, meet with them. But uh, there was one comment made about uh, cow pasture, um, and but. If you look at the historical aerials that you can get on Google Maps, this was a very well treed, so I don't know 
when, how far back in time the cow pasture was, but um, the d evidence that we have is that this was a very um, well-developed forest with, with trees at the time. So I just wanted to make note because that was put into the public record at, at the public comment section. Yeah, I'd have to dig, um, and I probably can, um, but I went back to uh, UNH Granite View mm -hmm. and um, the pond was there pretty early, uh, let's see, traditional use. I think the earliest photo I found was 64, 68 that, that showed the pond there. That would be consistent with um, what the landowner has, has reported. Yeah. Yeah, the, the pond is, has been been there for a while, but you know, as far as a, a cow pasture, I'm not, I'm, maybe I'm you know, thinking of a different section, but um, I just wanted to point out that uh, the pictures that we've included in the report um, are, are showing that these were mature trees. Do you have any, so. do you have any uh, recommendations or insight on um, cabinets for the, the abutters concerns moving forward? Attending the planning board. Yep meeting uh, coming to the office yep um, we have spoken the office and then has rec recommended either submitting written comments or attending the meeting for the public hearing with the planning board to provide those comments as well um, so that way they're attached to the file um, yeah definitely talking to staff too through being able to view the, the plan yep proposed plan. yep and they have a copy of that but if there's more files that they want to look at they're always anyone's welcome to come by I mean, so I'm not sure, too, and Dana, maybe you can answer this, but historically, to, I mean, to give you, if this is possible, that could give you more background of what we've been doing to address this. How long are our meetings available? Are they stored online? Yep, our meetings are, I think they brought over everything that's even historically old when they transferred to the new um, Channel 22. We have a new thing. So and that includes the minutes from the site walk. Yep, yeah, but minutes so. definitely are available, yeah, in the site walk minutes. But yes, um, we did briefly look at, they came in to look at some stuff briefly, and that's welcome to anyone in the public, public files and things like that. But yes, the videos are available online as too um, for historic stuff. And we could provide dates so that if people are curious so they don't have to scroll through everything. And I appreciate uh, city staff um, being kind of a, a liaison between uh, the applicant and abutters because if I file an update, um, at least city staff will have an email and can say, oh, this came in today and forward it to uh, the abutters so that they can stay informed. So I, I say that with the abutters here so that if something is filed, um, I will remind city, by the way, can you send it out to the yes, of people who are interested? So. They did get the um, your updated one as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry. Did anyone else have any comments or questions? I, I kind of ran the, the table here, but no, you covered everything I was going to say. I just have a question. Uh, one of the items. If I can find it. It's actually on your cover letter top of the second page is talking about a historic vehicle access point and moving it north of the 50-foot buffer yes I consider that an improvement because right now it's uh, within the 50-foot buffer and if you notice on the plan it's pushed out right I'm just into the hundred wondering why it's not pushed out to the hundred foot buffer point <coughs> out beyond the hundred foot buffer it will be on the abutters property The, the drainage swale is going to have a buffer, and so he will, Mr. Davis will have okay. wetlands sorry. buffers. I guess my, my question is, uh, I'm having trouble reading this, um, and I guess there is a updated uh, copy of what was sent. So our, the access road, is that to access the pond or the swale or... 
What exactly is it? It looked like it was what, whatever machinery was used to make that pile back in the day, to, you know, back in the what, 1950s or whenever that mm -hmm. huge pile was. If you look on, um, is it the LIDAR? You can see where there was this strip, hard strip. So um, that was, I mean, I don't know if we've got, let me just take a look at the uh, plans for the existing. So if you look at the 2016 aerial, you can see where it is. But at that point, it's, I don't know if it's. Okay, so you're saying at that point, he's outside the 100-foot buffer. With he's within road. the 50-foot buffer on a portion of that road. Right, and he's going to move that. Yep, okay. move it move it farther away from the pond right. to get out, of, get out of the 50. I mean, it's not much of a move. Maybe it's 8 feet, 6 feet. So it just seemed if they're going to be working at it, it's small peanuts to improve upon the plan by just moving it. Okay. Thank Vehicular you for that question. Vehicular access kind of implies human activity there. I mean, do you, do you have any idea of the, the purpose of the vehicular access? Well, I know he keeps some of his uh, trailers and stuff out back. I mean, he's a, a contractor, so, you know, Having had myself, you know, vehicles parked near a road and having the the, the, the diesel pumped out of them overnight, <laughs> um, it's kind of good to have them back from the road. So I know that that's one of the, the present uses. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we've covered a lot of ground. Does anyone want to take a crack at a motion? make a motion to approve the conditional use permit the added conditions that there's uh, monitoring and removal I'm sorry one second Ms. Brown um, I apologize uh, are we not addressing the second conditional use permit application sorry I left too soon you're right we didn't talk about the trees <laughs> I will stand here while you're doing your motion right, and okay. um, <laughs> Thank you. So this motion's then just for the after the fact excavation and alterations within the riparian wetland buffer. Um, first condition being the uh, the monitoring and removal of any aquatic invasives within the pond, and uh, that any fallen woody debris within the pond also be left and not removed. Um, other conditions do we have? Yeah, the regular monitoring for two years and to notifying to the, the aquatic yeah. species. Do you want to include, there was a comment regarding removal of invasives based off of DES's recommendations to implement their it was a comment to revise seven point two. Carry out the recommendations. Do you want to do have that for monitoring removal of aquatic invasives based off of DES's recommendations? Mm -hmm. I'll second that, and then as a discussion point, I just want to make sure I have these conditions correctly noted. Um, so the recommendation is to the planning board to approve with three conditions. One is to include monitoring removal of any aquatic invasives based off of NHDES recommendation. Uh, two is that any woody debris uh, located in the uh, pond is to remain in place. And three is that monitoring and uh, compliance with any outcomes of monitoring results as noted in the plan. Yep, perfect. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you very much.
Okay, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. As to the conditional use permit for the trees, I recall from our last meeting that you had wanted to know the location of the trees. And so that was included. If you look at the restoration plan, last page. Oh, wait a minute. I think you have to look at the new one. Do any of you have the new version? No, all right. I'm sorry. No, but I can make copies if we need to of any specific sheet. If there's one in particular, Marsha, that would be helpful for you. And I think we know where the trees are. I mean, we're talking about It's this on area. the imagery, right. right? No, it's not. I thought the trees, I'm sorry. I thought the trees were on the plan because I saw one and gave it to Mark Jacobs. Yeah, they're not on. It's not on either, I don't think, actually. Yeah, they're not on the new one either. Oh, son of a gun. My apologies on, on that oversight. <coughs> Looked at those little tufts on the last page in the wet, wet area where it says historic fill and uh, thought without my glasses that those were trees. But having measured and located them, um, I can show you a plan. I don't. I don't know that it's going to be um, big enough for everyone to see. Is the 2016 imagery helpful? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, like you're you're talking about this area right here. That's that it, that is moving. correct. But I think the specific question was, were they within an or without the 50 Buffer. hundred foot buffers? There were some that were in the 50, and there were some that were in the hundred. And I have a map that has the locations of them, but yeah. that is the green area on the 2016 aerial that is location of the trees that Mr. Um, Davis would like uh, cut under the second conditional use permit. Marsha, if it's something you have electronically that you can email me, I can print it. I'm looking for it. Okay. I, I'm not sure that we need to know. Okay. No, I don't think exactly. so. Um, but if we if we could know what uh, how many trees are uh, in the fifty? I found it in the I found it in a previous note um, from February fourteenth meeting. Um, it says that there's ten trees in total um, in question in the wetland buffer, three of which are in the zero to fifty foot section. Um, so I think that's probably what you were looking for. Maybe where where they were located. I don't I don't know if you can see any here. No, no. All right. Okay. Um, I'm I'm looking at two that are in the hundred foot and one, two, three, uh, five, six, seven that are in the fifty foot area. I'm sorry. Can you say seven in the fifty? Seven, seven. But in that green canopy area that you were noting on that 2016 plan. Yep. So part of that green canopy, two of the trees are in a hundred foot buffer. Uh, yeah, I understand. So that was the only question that I recall from the last meeting, uh, that you wanted to know the location of them. Sorry, we've got two areas of green canopy here. Are you referring to the one on the northwestern side of the pond or the southeastern? The northwestern, I believe. Western? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I wasn't at the site walk, so I yeah. didn't see them. Yep, northwestern. Okay, thank you. It's near the corner of the Rosemary Carrying revocable trust noted property. I don't know if you. I think too. You know, one of the things last time was, I, you know, we just wanted to pause on things until we got, you know, all of this other work. 
figured out and what the plan would be instead of continually, you know, continuing to disturb the area before there was another plan. Um, I do not know Mr. Davis's timing on his wish to get rid of those trees. He told us as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that recollection. <laughs> Did Mr. Davis state why he wants to remove those trees? Is it just to? Uh, I think it boils down to he doesn't like pine trees and he likes blueberry bushes and there's a lot of blueberry bushes. There is an understory under in there and there's there's more maples and things. I mean they are market ready. You know, I don't know that um, you know with the having had two trees blow down on my property you know having these towering things and now we're getting 50 knot winds is something that's palatable I think that somewhat played into it but um, <coughs> what I can see this has no impact on his property or his house yeah chance of blowing down but, uh, I'm just wondering if it's just to market the wood I, th I know that that is is a you know it'd be nice to, to liquidate that cash <laughs> I don't think we can assume what his motivation is, except for what he told us, that he doesn't like pine trees. Yeah, I don't think he was talking about that area, but. At this point, would they have any impact on the restoration that's being done? Mark Jacobs did not, not knowing when this is going to be occurring, he did not address it as part of the restoration. He did not, the restoration is just for the wetlands restoration. It's not for how to remove them no, if I'm there's not, damage. I'm not, I'm not meaning oh. that. I'm meaning. If they're, once they're gone, how are they going to impact the things that are being done for the restoration? Are they going to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, un undo a lot of the things <laughs> that are being done um, because the way the ground currently is, is and the way the trees and stuff are, is it going to have a negative impact on what's being done? In that section where the trees are, mm -hmm. there was f there's an understory. Right. Nothing, there's no disturbed area in there. To, that would be subject to the replanting for, of table one and table two. I so I don't think there's going to be any replanting in there. That's not what I was asking. I'm I was sorry, asking but thank you. Okay, if you could clarify. Okay, I was asking, we have these big massive trees with their own root system and all that kind of stuff. They're holding a lot of soil in place. Is there going to be a negative impact when those are out of air? And is he planning on like, what's he planning on doing with the stumps? Um, those kinds of things I was wondering about and how that would impact anything that's going on with the restoration. There is nothing responsive in the application or in the restoration plan to that point. Correct. Don't know whether the stumps are being removed. If they're being removed, that opens up a whole whole bunch of other questions. Uh, I'm sorry to not have, um, because our the uh, consultant did not address tree removal and restoring if needed. If you know that was going to need uh, restoration, because again, Mark Jacobs heard that no more disturbance. And so he's just trying to get Mr. Davis over the finish line for what has been disturbed. Kevin, do you have any idea? I mean, I I get where you're going with that. I don't I don't I think it would be minimal, you know, in terms of 
I, I, there could be a direct impact maybe if the if there was a um, if the trees fell the wrong direction you know they could potentially if I remember the distance right and it's been a while since I've been out there they could go in or touch the pond I think but um, in terms of you know as long as they didn't go in and uh, remove the stumps I think it, it would be minimal okay. you know so so but that's a great point I mean it may be something to at least address that you know the stumps would would probably remain um, or should remain I believe we've attached that as a recommending condition in the past for situations similar to this okay Mike questions or answers one way to look at this is um, is there a is there a driving need to make an exception in the 50-foot buffer uh, is there a hardship that's been addressed yeah not that I not that I can see yeah I agree I mean, if they were closer to the house or something but I mean there's there's a lot of distance between um, I also wonder, and, and I just, I don't know enough about this, but you know, that they provide a lot of shade for that pond too. I mean, so it could really, um, something could really blow up in there potentially with those removal. The temperature could change, the light's gonna change. Um, so yeah, I think this is a good point. And maybe a little bit more flexibility with the one, within the 100, but um, not so much in the 50. Concerning the 100, I, I think um, that's um, a done deal. more discussion Questions? make a motion to approve the conditional use permit for the tree removal within are we just approving from the 50 to the 100 foot you that would be my motion um, I'd like to approve the tree removal from the 50 to 100 foot buffer, but within the 50 feet, um, I'd like to keep them stay. I don't see that there's any need necessarily, or like you said, any hardship for those trees within the 50 foot buffer. And just a, as you mentioned, that risk of like an algal bloom or you know, temperature fluctuations within the pond itself, I think removing the trees within the 50 foot buffer is just too much of a risk. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what did you say about stumps? Yes, yeah, stumps to stay within the 50 to 100. I can second. Okay, any more discussion? All right, so the motion is to allow the cutting in the, within the 100 foot buffer, um, to disallow the cutting in the 50 foot buffer, and to leave the stumps in the 100 foot buffer. Correct. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. New business. Any new business to come before the commission? Uh, I just had one thing that I was driving past the cemetery and noticed what I thought was probably bittersweet. Um, Blooming in there, so. What did you say? Bittersweet. Bittersweet. Oh. Yeah, that stuff's everywhere. It's awful. Yeah. H had you um, begun, you know, looking into an inventory in there? No. I wonder if we should um, 
bring that to the attention of the cemetery committee. Um, did they do vegetation removal or? I don't know, but Mike Babinski is the staff liaison to the cemetery trustees. We could funnel that information and inquiries through him, if you'd like. Okay, yeah, please. So you want to know if they do vegetation management? They might contract it out. I don't exactly know. Yeah, whether they do, if they do, if that if that's in their wheelhouse, then um, contact me and I'll I'll know where I thought I saw it. Okay. Thanks. Any other new business? If you want on that cemetery, we I can move that up in the the schedule of things to do. And up to you. Uh, Jeremy's saying What's trees that? everywhere, so um, it's not like, I mean, I, I think the cemetery is, a, is probably something that we want to preserve, you know, as yep. a priority, but it doesn't really. No, it, it, it. it's not a problem. Uh, Idlehurst, I've finished that. Um, the plaza out here, I've finished. Green Street's about 99% done, so. Okay. Can start on that. Um, Save that for for your yeah. report. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Doing when are you doing the cemetery? We can talk afterwards. Yeah. Um, okay, old business. Item A, review the recommended tr native tree list proposed revisions, tree ordinance, chapter 33. Um, there was a word document sent out. Um, I, I'll give you a rubber stamp on those comments. I, I agree with all your, all your comments. So, do you just accept the list as is, the revised list? Yes. Um, and are, are you, one question I had is, are you assuming that there are species on here that are more southern, southerly species anyway that will be there to pick from for, for climate change yeah, yeah I mean I think well what I did was take a sort of first cut at anything that was had a really limited dis distribution in terms of a native distribution that was south and omitted those and then there was kind of a transition zone of like southern New England, maybe a little bit mid-Atlantic-y and kept those in play okay. um, considering climate, you know, future conditions. Excellent. And so the scope of this, um, the immediate scope is for the um, for the for the city recommended plantings. Um, we we would have to go back to council uh, with the final list to get it into the the tree tree board ordinance. So once we have the final list, we'll have to get on the agenda. What does everybody think? Works for me. Yeah, tree species, that's right, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, whether to adopt the 
document that as Kevin drafted it, uh, whether there are any changes that you want to make to it, and then uh, you know what do we want to present to council, or do we want to present anything? Just leave it. I mean, and just to be clear, I mean, I didn't draft the list. I edited the list. Edited that list it, okay. came, yeah, it came to us from right. city. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. If it's going to be in city recommendations and city city ordinances, then probably we need to make a recommendation to council, right? It is on. Too far away. Bill's, you're getting the look from Bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll say it again. Um, if if we have to um, make sure that it's an official list for the ordinances and stuff, then we probably do need to recommend this to city council. I'll make a motion to recommend this to City Council as presented. I'll second it. Yeah, no amendments. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, passes. Thank you for the work. Yep. Oh, do you want me to send her? I can't remember if you have a clean list or if you just have the edited. I can send. Can you send that to me, Kevin? A clean, like yep. a clean version. Okay. And then. <clears throat> Yes, I will work to navigate it through the council um, All right, thank you. journey. All right, easement monitoring. Um, I sent out a schedule, and um, then Dana let me know that um, some of the some of the easements on there are not. We're not responsible for monitoring them, so I need to revise that and send it out. So don't don't go out and. Do what I what I you know what I said to do uh, until I resend that. Any corresponding uh, correspondence regarding old business? <coughs> no. No. Just the there's a um, little handout on your desk that we got. It's not really old business or new business, but I guess it's kind of old. It's from summer 2023. Kind of mixed. Just a little FYI about the cottontails and um, yeah. Yeah, and a, uh, a, a thank you note from Cell. Yes. Yeah, we'll share that with everyone. Uh, member items, subcommittee items, and reports. Wildlife management plan for Lily Pond parcel. I don't have one. Invasive plan subcommittee report. Smith Kenyon no. exploration of formal conservation of Mallee Farm city parcel yeah still working on it uh, I think we're in a really good place uh, US Fish and Wildlife Service has uh, tentatively agreed to partner with us to conserve the area uh, so that's great news we have a solid partner now to, to um, provide a con conservation easement. So the, the 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 thing we need now is just to define the boundaries of the conserved area. And so I've been working with Michelle and Dana to, if you remember, we had one version of the map with the boundaries that I created. Uh, Michelle took that to the department heads. Uh, there was some concerns brought back to us about, you know, increasing the buffer around some properties, which made sense. I did a second map with trying to address those revisions. I met with Michelle and Dana uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, that map was going to then go back out to everybody for comment. I think one thing that impacted that time-wise was the Wednesday holiday, holiday, Juneteenth. So that meeting of the the heads didn't happen. Uh, but we have 
comments, I think, back from one person, and we're waiting for comments back from a second person. And I think Dana's going to find out uh, timeline-wise uh, about that uh, tomorrow, hopefully. So uh, once we get that, I mean, right now, that is the that that is the only need, really. And then it'll go, um, we'll start working hand-in-hand -hand with uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Well, and, well, I mean, that to... to not there's still other steps that have to occur but i mean to to firm up those boundaries and then you know we're going to move it forward in the city as well yeah so the, um at this point it's um timing issue where the, the fish and wildlife is is working on the realty portion of it we need to present this to council mm -hmm. um, we need to but we need to have a coherent presentation for them so maybe that's dependent on the, the boundary <laughs> designation um, I, I don't think maybe it would go over well if we went to council and said well we want to preserve most uh, yeah of this area for sure here. <laughs> no I agree I mean I don't think we really can do anything until we set the boundary okay. you know that that's my view of it because just for that matter I don't I don't want to I don't want to put us in a place where then, you know, we present something even tentative and then have to revise it. So, and, and I'm, I'm anticipating that we may have to tweak the boundaries again based on comments, but um, until we have it, I don't know. So, so is Mr. Belmore uh, apprised of the, uh, the discussions about the boundaries? Um, yes, so the city manager has reviewed the map, and I believe Michelle is providing background information and things like that, preparation to go to subcommittee, council subcommittee. Um, I believe it's the public works director that we were waiting to connect with. He is on vacation this week, so I might not have it tomorrow for an update. Um, but we, I will connect with Michelle regarding that to see if she did just have a conversation that I'm not apprised of um, regarding the boundaries. Um, but the city manager is. Do you think we could maybe shoot for ne by next Friday for? That's a great goal that I will try to achieve. OK, all right. So that's that's really it, I think, for where we're at. And once we have the boundary settled, we can work up. I'm happy to work up a presentation for you know wherever we have to, whatever we have to do with that. Thank you. It's a, it's a big time. What I said before. <laughs> City Tree <laughs> GPS Inventory Project, Doug Breyer. Uh, like I said, um, when, <clears throat> excuse me, took the information we had for Idlehurst, went back and updated that. Uh, just as much as uh, tree heights and diameters and that type of stuff, conditions. Uh, one of the things I found interesting was a lot of the honey locust trees that are out there that were designated as poor condition on the last survey that was done are now flourishing. So I don't know if it's the last year or the year before we had all the rain. That must have helped quite a bit, but then there are others that are failing. But uh, so that's been done. Um, like I said, the plaza out here, I surveyed last week. Um, we did the Green Street's about, like I said, 90, 95% done. Uh, was going to start on the side streets this week, but it's just too hot. So uh, still want to do the cemetery. Want to do the, uh, the Veterans Park off Main Street. And Main Street and probably Hive Street from City Hall down to probably Stackpole. Do you need any help? Whoever wants to help. <laughs> I, my, my problem is my time lots are like, might be in the middle of the day. So it's, uh, I mean, I can send out a, a message the night before or whatever and 
if anybody's interested. Yeah, please do. I am interested. Okay. I'm All right. All right, I'll send something out next week. Uh, I'm not going to be around, so week after probably. Great, thank you. Any other old business? Treasurer's report? Yeah. Our balance forward was $265,000, 443 and 51 cents. Interest received was $1,161.10. We had a uh, dispersing to Mittner Corporation Incorporated for $2,006.25 for an ending balance of $264,598.36. And that would, would have been the CERPRO? I believe so. Yeah, it wasn't, all it just says is Mittner Corporation, but I'm, I'm assuming that's what it is. I forgot to ask you, uh, I wrote myself a note, but it's on my phone, which is in my pocket. So, um, did you, um, whatever came of the Oaks follow-up, did you ask about that, about revisiting it, like the, the status of the pre-removal? I did not. No, that just kind of completely fell off and I forgot about it. Are you interested in I am, yeah. Okay. I'd definitely like to check that out and, and see what they've done or what they're doing because I know that was quite a big concern. And a lot, they had a lot they wanted to, to do. Yeah, I can reach back out and, and check on that. Okay, great. Thank you. And Ms. Crossley, uh, about the proposed um, new easement from Hilltop. Yes, I think I'm supposed to report on that, wasn't I? Yeah. Um, so the Hilltop Chevy um, on 108, there is a portion of their land that is wet. Um, if any of you remember, they came before the board, I think, for a conditional use permit. Um, 21? Norway Plains. 20. Norway Plains did it. Um, it was after they had had the fire when they did alterations to their building, um, they put an addition on. So a portion of their um, lot is rather wet um, and they approached the city about doing a lot line adjustment. Um, that went through with, I believe, Public Works and, Public Works and Environments um, Committee and the council. Council supported this um, to for Hilltop Chevy to give us the land to do the lot line adjustment. This land abuts to the Oaks conservation easement. So it would connect into that. Um, I can, once we get a copy of the lot line adjustment plan for the planning board, we can share it with you all if that is information that you'd like to see. But that will be part, um, and I think the intent is to incorporate that into the easement area. So it'll expand a little bit. And was uh, Hilltop interested in uh, paying for the creation of the easement document? We'll follow up. Thank you. All right. Would you like to adjourn? I'll second. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. All, all those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Meeting is adjourned at 7.50. Thank you.